Hi there and welcome back to the channel, whether you're watching it on Matter of Britain or Britain's Hidden History. Um, we're joined today by a special guest, Steve Willett. Who... Yes, yeah, yeah, Steve's just given us a um, absolutely fantastic talk, which uh, you are about to see yourselves. Um, uh, <laughs> we start with the story of Hen Wen and, and see how that leads us to the South East Wales Zodiac, which Steve has been working on. Uh, following some inspiration from Wilson and Blackett. Um, so, Steve, you you first came across this in Wilson and Blackett's Ark of the Covenant book. When was the first time you came across that book and, and how did it fall in your lap, so to speak? Well, it, it, it started before I got that book. That was a difficult book to find. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. I mean, I had just been away uh, for three months on a a silent meditation course, believe it or not. All right. And, uh, and at the end, when I came back, so I, uh, I want to write a book on Wales. No idea what it'd be. And I came back and I just started Googling stuff. And the first thing that came up was Wilson and Blackett's work. And oh, I was, okay. so not Googling, uh, YouTube in. And, uh, and I, I, I started watching something I what well, around you? That's that's down the street from me. <laughs> I mean, I've lived in the valleys all my life. Never knew any of the real history. I didn't. Need, mm. I saw King Arthur was in England somewhere. Not he could have been around here. Mm. Um, he could still have been in England. I don't know. But but when the stories was telling, and and then the stories of the of the star map and all these different saints, and I see. I mean, I can see half of this from my house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Never knew it existed. In fact, I never knew. I, to be honest, I wasn't interested in history at all. Um, the only history I ever got taught is in school about kings and queens' names and mm. stuff that you don't really enjoy as a child. No. <laughs> and then, But because it was related to everywhere, and basically I, I ended up being in the centre of it all, um, of the star yeah. map. Um, right, right in the in bang in the middle. But I, I, I got fascinated and hooked pretty quickly, and mm. then I think, well, one of the first ones videos I watched was a uh, the episode on Richard Hall over in Gone to Faith. Um, and I thought, I mean, is that ancient around here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know the pits and the mines and all, all that kind of, of history. But yeah, it's, uh, it, it was an eye-opener for me because I never, like I said, I was never interested. And mm. then uh, through Wilson and Blackett's work, I got hooked in a way. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so did, did the Zodiac in particular interest you because you you were geographically placed right in it? You know, is that, is that yeah. why that yeah. element of Wilson and Blackett really yeah. grabbed you? yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. uh, and I, I when I was younger, you know, I, I, I always used to go up uh, from my house. I could walk twenty meters. I'm on, I'm on a mountain, and I used mm. to lie down as a kid, just looking up, watching the stars, and that. So I've always been interested in the stars, anyway, without having any formal sort of formal knowledge as such. And uh, but yeah, that's what got me into buying. The Ark of the Covenant, because there's always these little bits that were teased here and there. And I thought, well, I, I, I want to know we're all now. Yeah. <laughs> they do do but, that, don't they? They just drop, oh, drop yeah. little little bits in, don't they? Yeah. Uh, but uh, when I went through the Ark of the Covenant then, I quickly realised that this, it wasn't a, a completed star map. They did, they'd only sort of found, and, and um, but they had done enough to say, look at you. And then yeah, they were moving. Yeah. They, they were off onto the other big discovery then. Yeah, but I can remember. Yeah, Alan's yeah. But like, I, I, I was going to say. I think even doesn't Al, Alan Wilson even say <clears> that? <throat> look, we've got this, mm. but it's just too much for us considering yeah. how much else we, we've got on. Someone else needs to come yeah. and come and but do yeah. this. You know, I'm not sure he's being interviewed by, and he said, "Yeah, we need somebody to take her over." And so I thought I'd give her a go. And needless to say, almost it's coming up to six years, I should imagine now. It's definitely five, possibly six years now, and <laughs> I still haven't got it out. 
<laughs> well, you've, you've done a great job for us today, but, and we're, we're we're hoping to do some more yeah. in future as well. But, but what I think, but by the time you, know, you see more and more and more, I think by the end of it, I think what I've done is prove Wilson and Barkett one hundred percent correct that there is yeah. a star map here, and it is from that time period. Absolutely. And we'll get into what the time period yeah. is in a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I first came across your work on the Britain's Hidden History Show. Um, you had a couple a couple of interviews with Ross or just the one, was it? Um, I've been on some of the site visits and yeah. I, I oh, did that's the, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, and um, one... I just wanted to, to, to see if what memories you had of had of speaking with Ross and 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 your site visits. And... Oh, it's uh, oh, it loads of fun, and it was it was always it wasn't just me and Ross. It was a gang of us normally. Tim was there as oh, well. Oh yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, Andrew was there. The boys were there. Um, Tim's wife and whatever, but it and, and Bob Morgan as well. Oh, trudging, yeah. trudging up and down mountains looking for a, a little lump on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Sounds like a great time to me, to be honest. It's, it's pretty much all I do most of the time. Yeah, yeah. It's oh no, good fun, good fun. <laughs> That's fantastic. But, yeah, you no. Know, even when you, you said I gone over his house once, been done uh, into. Um, God, we were over there for hours. He's only supposed to be a quick one to get it out <laughs> the <Yes>. same day. <laughs> Yeah. I bet I bet once you got him going, I bet he just didn't want to I bet he just wanted to keep on going. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, well I, I done I said, oh I said I got a couple of hours yet. Do you wanna do, you wanna do the next bit and the next bit and <laughs> what all of it? <laughs> oh brilliant. His enthusiasm was un oh, unmatched, I, can, I think. Yeah. I, I mean, that's what I was gonna say, yeah, is uh I mean the he was helping me write this book and I was started off like and uh, obviously he passed away but it was his energy that kept me going mm. um, there's yeah. a couple of times when I thought I've had enough of this day oh no no no, no, no. <laughs> and you go yeah. and you G you up and then we yeah 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 absolutely and I think me and Adam have said the same thing about doing these videos is that if it wasn't for his entreaties yeah, um, mm. you know, to people saying like, "Look, we we all need to do this." Uh, we wouldn't have started doing the channel, um, yeah. so we really are greatly indebted to him for that. Well, yeah, that's it. I, I mean, I I joined right in the early days of Britain's hidden history, um, not knowing what I was getting myself in for. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't have done anything I, I that I've done without first of all, even the all the members of putting stuff on the Facebook uh, page, you go, oh, mm. right, uh, that might be a good idea. Oh, well, possibly that. And they point out something totally unrelated and it just triggers something and you go, and then obviously Ross setting it up, you know, if he hadn't set it up, I wouldn't have done any of this because I wouldn't have found all this information and, and, and people who could have uh, helped or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, I, and I think what you've done has been an incredible cr contribution and... yeah is going to be also hopefully a springboard for other people into yeah. into understanding yeah. this stuff not just for their own benefit but hopefully for for, for all yeah. of us in, in in possibly learning more and digging up more of the details and yeah but as uh i mean even though i'm still writing this book i don't know how long it's going to take me because i've never written a book in my life so <laughs> I, I, it's like oh no i've got to do that as well mm. but I'm still going to start releasing the information. I think I just is is about time now. I I can't keep keep it to myself for too for any longer. I, I need to start getting somewhere out of there. Well, it's an there. absolute absolute honour to be able to help you get it out there. Yeah, and I'm really excited mm -hmm. to see how this will develop in hopefully some oncoming episodes. Um, but for now, we'll get started with Hen Wen, and I hope everyone home enjoys. Enjoy. Let's go. <laughs> the main thing that I'll be going over today um, is, as you can see on the screen, the story of Hen Wen. Um, I've just put on the on the front screen. Uh, these are just uh, the references where I've got this information from. Um, so this story of Hen Wen is basically um, a story 
of an ancient pig or ancient swine. And what I'm going to be trying to do is trying to tie that into the constellations of the star map. So that, that will end up being towards the end. Um, Henwell come, comes in later. Um, we'll have to go through some details first before that. Um, but the, like I said, the main thing is to try and tie in this story into the star map. Mm -hmm. So those references you can see is a couple of Wilson and Blackett reference. Either what the main one was a discovery of the Ark of the Covenant. Of course, um, yeah, yeah. That that's uh, basically that's that's the one that has got the star map in it or the beginnings of it. Then, mm. um, so I thought I'd just sort of try and work it all out, and uh, and then all the other information. The other main one is Babylonian star, though is sort of. A nice introduction to the subject in a an easier read than an academic source. It's a bit more accessible. Right. Yeah, a bit more accessible. Um is well referenced, so yeah. Yeah, so that's great because I know our, our watchers are keen on on references and things like that. So it's it's good to see that right at the beginning to have that there. People to look yeah, at. Yeah, so yeah, the, the, these are the the but in fact I think these are the only references that uh, the only sources I've used. Cool. Um, towards the bottom, you've got uh, the GPC, um, the online dictionary of Welsh language. Mm -hmm. um, that's essential. Um, you can't do it with an old dictionary. The matter, even if it's 15, whatever. Um, it's just a lot of the words are not, a lot of the alternative meanings are not in them, uh, uh, in these old dictionaries. Um, but what the GPC does, uh, what I think they do anyway, is they take all the old texts, Welsh texts, and then go through them and see where these words are used, and then work out what that meaning would be, which are not always in the later dictionaries. So, yeah, yeah it's 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 an essential tool um, for for what I'm doing. So I need to have try and get the meanings of words as far back as possible. Um, so that was an essential one as well. Um, but yeah, so those those are the, the the main points on on that page. And you, you've also got astral science in Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. Basically, gone through all these Mesopotamian, Babylonian star lists, what have you, um, and they try to work out which star is rep, which constellations, which stars are in which constellations, um, and which because some of the stars are named, and which star is which. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, and another essential one but yeah we go through this as we go along anyway cool cool so the first slide then um this is from wilson the blackett um the trojan wars mm -hmm. um and, and this is about the migrations um i'm this is not a presentation about the migrations but is uh what i'm trying to show with this is that you know, for people who, who not new uh, were new to the subject, is that there were already migrations that Wilson the Black had pointed out from I don't know if you can see it, the Kingdom of Ur on there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's in Babylonia. Um so you got the Kingdom of Ur down there and you got the migration coming into Britain. Um and the story of Hen when then you could say starts in Cornwall and possibly one of these migrations. Now, okay. it, it, as, I, as I'll explain later, it, it's, it's not, you can't be certain, you can't be certain if, um, if, these ta if this tale is linked to the Kingdom of Earth, but what I'm trying to do is put information on to the show that some of this knowledge has come across. Of course. Great, yeah. Prov providing a, a historical context. Or possible yeah, that's, historical that's, that's context. It, yeah. 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 And then one of the main reasons why I showed this, if if you look at uh, the right and on the top right hand corner, you've got the Great Chaldean migrations. Now you got Albion there or Albine from Ur to Britain in around 1700 BC, 1700 BC, and then Brutus around 500 BC. So the dates are important. Um, because I didn't know which stamp who built the stamp up. So mm. I, I was trying to put into context of either 
is it the earlier one or the later one? Yeah. Um, um, you start to get in this presentation, you'll get towards the end an idea that it, it might be one and not the other. But at this at this point, it won't be conclusive until more is, is added on to it. Exciting. That's an yeah. 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 If that makes sense. Yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, right, eh? So this is a story of Hen Wen. Um, and this was, well, they don't know when it's written. It, 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 it's so old that they don't know um, when this would have been written. Mm. Um, so I'm going to be trying to tie this in to one of the migrations, which shows the age of it then. So I'm not going to be given the story is, is more than what I've been shown today. I'm only showing you the bits that are relevant from this perspective of um, this star map in South East Wales. Because Hen Wen carries on her journey after coming to South East Wales. She goes west and then north. Okay. Um, and well. there's also a mention of King Arthur and knights, etc. So... The, st the tale starts, it says, in Cornwall at a place called Glen Dalthweir. Now, you've got to forgive my Welsh pronunciation at the moment. I'm learning. I get a better. <laughs> so if some of these pronunciations are, are not quite spot on. Um, so anyway, starts in Glen Dalthweir. Um, not sure where that is. I've looked at the, all the maps down in Cornwall. Can't find, can't no, find I, that look. Yeah. I had a quick look as well when... And although, uh, like Dol D O L is quite a um, recurring yeah. name in 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 Cornwall and Bre Brittany, um, yeah, something that sort of t looked more like that form. I'm, I wasn't too too sure, but I I did have a good search around after you sent me the presentation to have a look for that. <laughs> yeah, I I but I but I couldn't find anything that you could say that it definitely is like so. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a hen, why then is a a swine or a female pig. Um, she's in company, company by Koth, um, who's a swine herd, and he works for Dalswee Dalthben. Um, Hen Wen is about to give birth, um, which, according to the legend or the, the myth or the story, um, it doesn't bode well for Britain. Um, whatever she gives birth to doesn't bode well, and... It, it, the tale goes on that King Arthur and his knights gather to try and drive her out. Okay. Right. Um, so they chase then, Hen Wen and Koth, a chase from Cornwall to a place called Penryn Austin. Hmm. Um, she dives into the sea, Koth holding on to her. And they make landfall then at Abaturagi, at Gwentis Coit, or Gwent Below the Wood, which Gwent... Uh, there's a place there, I'll go into a minute, but Wentwood Forest, or Went, which would possibly Gwent, because when you mm. mutate words in, in Welsh, sometimes a G is dropped and then just a Went. So Wentwood mm -hmm. could be Gwentwood Forest. Yeah. And then she reaches the foothills of Manith Lloyd, lies down and gives birth to a bee and a grain of wheat at Mice Greneth. Now, that could imply they bought they brought farm into the to the area, mm. um, but uh, for for what we're doing, that's not important as such. There is a place called Mice Greneth. Manith um, Lloyd is up on the hills, and Mice Greneth is down in the lowlands. Um, but the foothills would be somewhere in between, and I would suggest. Mm. Okay. So. Right, so this is the path. I, I've got more detail than this. Um, but we'll just go through this for a moment. So right at the bottom, I've marked it down in the bottom. Um, it, it could be anywhere in Cornwall. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. So then Henwen follows the path up to Penryn Austin, which could be Ost Cliffs. Mm. Now, I don't know if you know the old Seven Bridge and the had the Ost services right at the end, yeah. on the one end, and then there is a set of cliffs there. So so oh, the path would be 
Okay. Yeah. There, there is a a Penryn near Falmouth in Cornwall as well. All right, yeah. But I don't think I've never seen a Ost or Austin name yeah. uh, associated with that. But just as a as a point of interest. Yeah, that might be worth looking at. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um. Then, like you said before, Henwen crosses the River Severn. Uh, we call Old Inn onto her and ends up at Abaturogi. Now, on the old maps, on the new maps, you can't see it, but on old Ordnance Survey maps, there is a Trogi Brook, a brook. And that's mm. near Port Skewet on the, the Welsh side of the, the River Severn. Nice. Now, this is only a little small brook. And I think it's, it's in Port Skewet where uh, Wilson and Black had found it's sort of like it re- remains of a like a port or something going out into port, the sea. Port, yeah, it does, yes. it does. Yeah, Port Skewet does ring a bell. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it, it could be somewhere around there that uh, they, they came ashore on the other side. Mm. So, Gwent is quite, which is Gwent below the wood, which could be Wentwood, Gwentwood um, forest. Now, he says that uh, she skirts around that forest, which means we, we would have gone south of it. And then eventually laid down to give birth on the foothills of Manith Lloyd. So Manith Lloyd is not far from Cumbran, that area, up in the mountains. In, in fact, it's not far from Tumbalum Hillfort. Oh, right. right. Okay. okay. So you've got Tumbalum Hillfort on on the one end, mm. and up, it's probably about a couple of miles on the same mountain, follow the mountain up over the top, and you get to Manith Lloyd. Okay. Yeah. So, are you okay with that minute? Or yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's oh, yeah. great. I'm, I'm, I'm following. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. You see, I'm not uh, not used to doing these, but there we are. No, no, that's all right. No worries. <laughs> it's going well. Yeah, yeah. We'll jump if there's anything that we we're, we're confused about. There's no, I, I will definitely jump in. So <laughs> yeah. don't oh, worry about that. <laughs> no, you keep going. This is great. <laughs> right. So. What I try to do then is try to the characters within the story trying to because Wilson and Blackett, but well, what they I found was fascinating when I first heard them do this. They get these old texts and then they try and translate the, the characters' names and the place names and try to get mm-hmm. information out of them. And I thought, I mean, I, I've lived in South, well, I've lived in Wales all my life, and I'd never have thought of doing it. And uh, what mm. does that word really mean by breaking it down? Yeah. So I started doing that. Uh, and uh, you, you're surprised how much information you sort of get out of the words. Absolutely. So anyway, I, I, yeah, it's, it's always yeah. absolutely fascinating me. You know, they, they just, you can just seem to be able to pull even more information out. It's just yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, because what I honestly think that. I can't speak for any other part of it. It's just this one area in South East Wales. I think it's just a giant manuscript telling <laughs> yeah. all these stories. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. And whether people went from place to place learning the stories, because there's an ideal starting point. Um, mm. And then, like Wilson and Black has said, it's a circle of zodiac. Mm. Yeah. So you start in this is going off topic site, but you start at, at a certain point in uh, in Babylonian sort of the view of the heavens. You have these two constellations, the bow and the arrow, which could be pointing the starting point and the direction to go. Yeah. And then if you um... yeah, and then if you follow the landscape, um, you, you follow that the one hill goes east to. No west to east. Mm. Then the rivers goes south to north. Then the mountain at the top goes east to west, and then the other mountains rivers come down north to south. So it it forms like an old like a circular sort of say shape, and you could sort of see how we could possibly go to the middle, and in the middle is lower than the surrounding hills. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I, I had a look at because uh, you mentioned this to to Ross when you had his his chat uh, your chat with him, 
and I uh, I had a quick look on the Google Earth, and it, it almost seems like a like a giant amphitheater. Yeah. So you've yeah. got this sort of level area in the center, and then a, a um, or leveler, and with, with sort of with sort of foothills getting a bit higher, and then and yeah. then the mountains around in a circle yeah. around the outside. I mean, I'm not saying they shaped all the mountains, but they no, used no. them. <laughs> but it's yeah. perfect. Yeah, it is, it is a perfect sort of uh, natural viewing spot or yeah. um, astronomy yeah. area, area. You know, it's uh, something yeah. they regularly say about um, the Stonehenge landscape is, is is ideal for viewing stars and things like that. So yeah, you, yeah. you need a fairly flat. You need a good line of sight. Then is probably the yes, best absolutely. Yeah, describing it. Yeah, because um, if you're going to build something over this, could be forty to fifty miles in diameter. If you're going to build something over that distance, then you're going to have you, you'll need good line of sight. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, it doesn't have to be from one end to the other, but you need to be able to see point to point to point to point. Point to point, yeah, absolutely. When you're at one point, you need to be able to see your your nearby ones, and then. Yeah, and from there moving yeah. on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because when you're on the top of the, the valleys, it's it's like one big plane. Sometimes you don't even know mm. the valleys are there. You can just see straight across. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, and it, and it's uh, there are no trees on them, so mm. to block the views. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always interesting things under the trees as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not just trees as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, anyway, yeah, so a pen wen, um, a white south female swine, um, hen just meaning older ancient. Yeah. Now, wen is the mutated form of gwen. Um, in the Welsh language, certain words can be mutated. Um, in this case, if it's a G, then that G can be dropped. So mm. gwen would... Yeah, so if you went to a dictionary and tried to find the word when for this meaning, you'd have to look up when. Mm -hmm. if, right. Yeah. So that's that, 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 G, that GW mutation is very common, isn't it? It, it is, yeah. 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 Um, so uh, Gwen then means fair maiden, smile, or figuratively, figuratively a ray of sunshine. So the white bit, I think that comes from the because Gwen is a feminine version of Gwyn, mm. and Gwyn can, mm. Gwyn can mean white. So I think that's where that white comes from. Oh, okay. So then you got Glyn Dalswi or Dalswi Dalsben. So Dals means blind or unseen. Okay. Um, and we, I'm not sure to pronounce that word, but they, it can mean grandchild or, importantly for us, descendant. Mm. And then Ben or Pen um, is head, chief, leader, lord, ruler itself, etc. Yeah. So then Koth itself means lost, missing, or astray. So with, with these words that we have so far, um, you can sort of see that because the Dalf bit means blind and seen, or somebody who hasn't been seen for a while, Koth means lost. You have the descendant for them from the older bit, um, which could then possibly mean that Al it could be indicating that Albine and the followers who you haven't seen well, been lost unseen, they've been somewhere else, the descendants, which means they must have been British or mm. at, at some stage. Yeah. To, to be a descendant, you must be related in some way. So if they're coming back. From wherever they've been, where have they been? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that that gives that double meaning for the blind to see. Yeah, or well, unseeing. Yeah, yeah. So they haven't seen each other. Um, they like well lost, missing, astray. So it doesn't mean to say they've come from Babylonia. It doesn't mean to say it's Albine. It's just that wherever these people are. They've come, the descendants of Britain, and they've come back from somewhere. Mm. Oh. Yes. It's brilliant. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So, what I did then is try to see if I could find any 
stories then in Sumeria, Babylonia, um, and it was straightforward to find them about people arriving there from somewhere else. So if, if these people from Britain left here, possibly went to Babylonia, are there stories of people arriving there from, or mm. from somewhere which they don't know where? Yeah, look at the other end of it. Yeah, yeah. so I thought I'd, I'd, I thought I'd look at the other end and see if, mm. if there was anything that you could possibly say, well, well these there's people have arrived here from somewhere, but have they come from from this area? So there's a, a character called Owanes, and uh, a, he was one of the, what are known as, I'm not sure about how to pronounce this, this is an Acadian word, Apkal, Apkalu, I'm going to say. So Say it with confidence, that's the trick. Yeah. Ap, Apkalu. <laughs> That's so, it. So yeah, That's so what it is yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Uana, Uana, so Uana, I think Uana is the Sumerian. Um, right. So these people arrived in Sumeria um, and the Apkalu were known as wise, well, Apkalu means wise or sage. Mm. And the first one was Uanes. So I, I, what I've done, you know, I've just added Barosis into the mix for a moment. Um, he was writing, I think, in about the third century BC, somewhere mm. around there, um, during the Hellenistic period, if, mm. if I remember right. That might not be quite right, but anyway. Now, there are issues um, in academia with Barosis and his account, um, but I've, I've put it in here just to demonstrate um, that people have arrived there. Now, this is not a first-hand account from Barosis. He wasn't alive at the time. No. Um, so this would have been the stories that have been being told there. So there's a couple of reasons why I put this in. First of all, to show that there was a group of people who arrived there. It doesn't say where they come from. Um, and then just to um, try and show that there's a connection I've got quite a few of these words where you can translate the, the Sumerian or the Akkadian, you do some phonetic Welsh and you get the same meaning. Right. Fantastic. Mm. So the, the first one would be the Apkalo. So, I, so Barosis basically said this, um, when Oanis arrived and the Apkalo arrived in Sumeria, um, there was no civilization there, basically. Um, they say that the people lived just like animals. I, I don't like terms like that. They were, mm -hmm. they were people. They just had a different type of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and he goes on to describe um, this people, the Apkalu and Oanis. So I'll, I'll just read this and make it easier. So basically, in the very first year, they appeared from the Red Sea, in an area bordering on Babylonia, a frightening monster named Oannes. Now, I'm not sure why they call him a frightening monster, um, because he, he brought civilization there. Mm -hmm. So it, he said it had a whole body of a fish, but underneath and attached to the head of the fish was another head, human, and joined to the tail of the fish, feet like those of a man, and it had a human voice. Now, there are a lot of interpretations of this, but I just think is it is a man. Mm. I know he's got all the descriptions to the mic. He might have just been wearing some kind of garment. Wearing a Pope's hat. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A Pope's hat and a gown. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the thing is, though, they, they said they're the body of a fish, but a fish has scales, armor has scales in a way. Yeah. 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 I was thinking yeah. about that. Yeah. So it, it could be some kind of just outfit. And uh, so Amy said that the process says that this monster spent its days with men, never eating anything, but teaching men the skills necessary for writing, mathematics, all sorts of knowledge, how to build cities, found temples, and to make laws. Basically, it taught men how to determine borders and divide land, mm -hmm. also how to plant seeds, and then to harvest their fruits and vegetables. 
in short, it taught men all those things conducive to a settled and civilized life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, like I said, I can't see why you would call her a frightening monster. Because it looks like you know, these people, what these wise ones, these wise sages, have turned up there and taught them everything for a civilization. So I'm not sure where the, the frightening monster bit comes from, but that's what he, he states anyway. Mm. Yeah. It's hard to tell if that's from a, a an original source or whether Barossa's has put it yeah. in himself or... That's it, yeah. 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 But I mean, you get the idea. Basically, there's an idea that um, from the sea, a group of people arrived, mm. but they don't know where from. They just they don't say where these people came from. Just like uh, Henry, yes. they disappeared, yeah. lost, missing, astray. Don't know where. So the idea are these two. Are these two stories linked in any way? So mm. anyway. Um, the Apocalu, you know, if you break that down into phonetic Welsh, we have Ap, which is son of, and Cal, which is spelled with a K, but there's no K in Welsh, so it would be a C, pronounced Cal, so Ap Cal would be wise discerning. So mm-hmm. Ap Cal would then mean sons of the wiser or something like that. Which yeah. is very fitting. That's which fair. is very fitting for the Akkadian, is, means wise or sage. Hmm. <laughs> very fitting with the story so it's brilliant fantastic <laughs> love that so so I, I've put this in as well like because I, I, I'm going to be trying to introduce a number of ideas as well so I, I put this in only for a couple of reasons so there's a character Dagon or Dagon uh, Dagon is a Sumerian so we'll just look at the Sumerian version um, so I got this from Wikipedia, um, one of the best places in the world. <laughs> it's a good start. It, it, is. <laughs> it, it, it is. is. I mean, it's, it's, it's not something I'm really looking at, but I put this in just to to show something then, to, mm. to show, yeah. Yeah. So basically, originally, um, this Dagon, or Dagon, um, they thought was... One, one of the Apkalti, apart from one, is another one called o- Odakon. So he was also a half fish or a person that o- Oanis was. Um, and they, they thought originally that Dagon or Dagons was um, one of the Apkalu. Right. So and when they saw these fishmen motifs, they put it down to, to Dagon or Dagon. Um, it, it later on uh, they believe those are, are just depictions of uh, of a different creature then. Okay. Yeah, but what I find interesting then is when you translate the Dargan with the Sumerian into again to phonetic Welsh, you have Dar meaning good, beneficial, holy, blessed, and Gan which. You won't find in the dictionary. You you would need like the GPC to to get mm. these definitions. It's it's got two basic meanings, and you go with or together with, and mm. also scale of a fish. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's brilliant, so isn't the, it? So then you've got to start thinking. Well, is this Dagon? Is he actually represented as one of these fish characters? Because mm. the world yeah. is saying that he, he could well be. Yeah. Fantastic. So what I wanted to point out here, I'll, I'll show a couple more examples. But the Gan, in Welsh, you've got a lot of dual words. Um, words with double meanings, sometimes three, sometimes four meanings. And they don't always make any sense why they, those words with the same word, the same pronunciation would be, why that word would have like three meanings, four meanings. So... What I started doing then is thinking, well, maybe they're not just separate meanings. Maybe it's one meaning. If you add the words, the meanings together, add them together, and they give you a fuller meaning. Yeah. So what what I'm trying to say is you can then start making sentences then out of these different 
meanings. I, yeah, I mean, no, no, that, yeah. that, that totally makes sense. Uh, I think that makes sense to me. And, uh, you know, you do wonder if at some point there is uh, some other sort of um, semantic meaning mm. missing, which might link the two ideas together that we're now yeah. missing now or something like that. I think yeah. that's that's yeah. a possibility. Yeah. So then, Yeah, that's fascinating. So if, if you do add the two words for gan together, you could have together with the scale of a fish. Rather than treat them as two separate words, two mm. separate meanings, treat them as one meaning, as one sentence. Um, my, I, I, well, I, I can't say for certain, but it could have been a point in the past where gan meant together with the scale of a fish. And then as you're going through time, it's, it's then split and sometimes they use it mean it together with sometimes they use a scale of a fish and then scale of a fish at some point gets dropped. But it, the original meaning might have meant together with the scale of a fish. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So then you'd have then um, the God with the scale of a fish because the, the first part, the good, beneficial, holy, blessed, that's the God bit. God, yeah. And then you, you could have the, the god with the scale of a fish, which would mean they might, which points then to that the original idea of Dagon or Dagon being a, a fish character might still be correct. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's really good. Go to the. All right, so this is. A summary of what we've done so far, just a quick overview. Um, firstly, that story of Barosis shows that civilization didn't start in Mesopotamia. Because he, Oannes and the Apalu, when they came to the Red Sea, they taught the people who lived there civilization or everything to lead a civilized life. Mm. So it wasn't originally there. But mm. was imported then from an outside source by the Apkalu. Where from? I can't be certain. <laughs> it's the million dollar question. <laughs> yeah. It is. It <laughs> Look, is. the further you go, sometimes the more uncertainties that there are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is where you got... get into Graham Hancock and his and his lost civilization, you know, and definitely. Yeah. Atlantis yeah. ideas and uh, and there's various civilizing gods all throughout yeah. the world. What yeah. what comes what comes to mind for me is um, when Hugh Evans talks about um, Kadir Idris being the seat of Enoch and what Enoch represents and all of those kind of his dissemination of information to do with agriculture, <coughs> to do with knowledge of the stars, to do all these civilization things. So I thought uh, that's what came to mind for me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I can't say it like I said, I can't say at the moment whether these two stories are linked, but I I I I'm putting them there to pose a question then in a way. Yeah, no, no, that's great. So then, uh, secondly, this fishman Akalu, I I like the I like to try and find simpler ideas, simpler explanations as, as simple as possible if I can. Um, I just think what they were depicting with these fish costumes is just saying that, well, they came from the sea as an mm. arrived by ship. Yeah. Um, again, I can't be certain again of that, like, but but that would be what I would suggest, that they, they simply arrived by sea. Mm. Um and then I mean, if, have... you've, if you if you've never seen if you if you've never seen a an ocean going vessel before. Yeah, and then you you first see one. I mean, how do you how do you go about describing that that experience of seeing an ocean going vessel if you if you've got no, you know, no previous understanding of what that could possibly be? That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it it would be like I see in a UFO. Then if a UFO did land, it would be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people just want to know, know how to describe it. Yeah, yeah. So we have then Dalsby or the Unseen Descendants um, suggesting at some point 
uh, the people of the island of Britain left these shores to an unknown destination and may have been astray calls then for generations. Um, so basically, what, what I'm trying to say here is, uh, are these two stories linked? And yes. has there been any transfer of knowledge from Babylonia to Southeast Wales? Mm. So that, that's that's the main the main idea I'm trying to get forward is has yeah. this knowledge come from Babylonia to Southeast Wales? And going through the star map, um that it appears to be, but I let people make up their own minds on it. But if, if you look at say the Dendra Zodiac, um the Greek Zodiac or what have you, the only one of fits really well is a Babylonian man. Yeah. So yeah. you'll have parts you'll have parts of the other because there is some crossover. But the one that seems to fit is the, the Babylonian star map. And what sort of era are we talking for for, for Babylon? Well, I get my Sumerians, city... Circadians and Babylonians mixed up. So <laughs> I just need a bit oh, of a yes. um off the top of my head I can't remember the, the exact dates. I'll have a, I'll have a, I can have a Google as well. Yeah, that might be a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just to say a completely random number. Uh, Babylonian <laughs> civilization. Um, here we go. Yeah, from, so uh, <laughs> it emerged um, around the uh, around two, um, 1800, 1900 BC. It started emerging. According to yeah. Wikipedia, that is anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, I, I will say this as well. I I might sometimes use the word Babylonia as a catch-all term. Yes, of course. Yeah, so, cool. yeah that's yeah. Fine. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So it could be Sumerian, it could be Babylonian, it could be whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it, 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 this, this I don't think you're. I don't think you're the first or last person to do that, Steve. So no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so we just go into a bit more depth. Um, for Koth now, the, the swine herd. Um, so we've got two triads, um, and this is in Trios and Is Pradine, um, Rachel Bromwich, mm -hmm. um, version. Um, so I'm just going to look at Triad 26 and Triad 27. So Triad 26 states three powerful swineheads of the island of Britain. And then it lists the three of them, which is Dresden, Sanatathoch. Praderi Sanapol and Kolf Sanakol Free. And then you got Trier 27, he's got three enchanters of the island of Britain. Again, Kolf, there's a Kolf Sanakol Free, Menu Sanaturguiz, and Drach Sanel Kibzar. I think that's how they pronounced it. <laughs> I think you did bloody well there, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so, what you, what you can sort of say about those two descriptions is that the swine herd is both powerful and an enchanter, or mm. a modern term would be druid. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, so. Yes. It, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So on Mary Jones's, and, and I just randomly looked at the footnotes on, on this, um, she's got an article on her website um, about calls, and I just put her notes in the bottom, which is something I didn't relate. It just gives an example then um, of Kolf being a swineherd, where Masaloch goes to his swineherds for advice. Um, but what's interesting, she puts here, is to note that the term druid never appears in the Mabinogion. And I didn't realise that until hmm. I actually read it. And I thought, yeah. oh my word, yeah. 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 Is this, is, it was like a... a yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eureka moment. <laughs> Brilliant. But, yeah, but it said this, the word swine, it often does. Mm. Um, and she goes on to describe that a similar position being held as that of the Druids in the Irish trails. Um, but it, what I found interesting that uh, this word swine is in the Mabinogion or the Mabinogi, but Druid isn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so anyway, we got this idea now that Koth is some kind of 
priest, some kind of druid. Um, it's like the like swine herd. It could be something like a shepherd, you know, like the shepherd of men, because shepherd is just sheep herd. Well, yeah, that, that that's what sprung to mind in terms of a you know a, a religious uh, you yeah. know a priest a priest tending his flock or something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. So the question then be, why swine herd? Mm. Why swine or why swine herd? So, um, in, like Gavin White, like I said, he he, ex he explains things in a non-academic way. Then you could say. Um, so basically, he says that in astrology, the swine is sometimes used as a name for Jupiter, and this is in Babylonian star law. So the Babylonians would. Sometimes instead of using the word Jupiter, they would use the word swine there. Um, Marduk himself, which is uh, one of the preeminent gods of Babylonia, and he basically took over the role of Enlil at some point. Um, he became the patron god of Babylon. But he is also associated with the planet Jupiter. Mm. And then, you've, it, interestingly, now you got... Marduk is famous for having a, a, the celestial thunderbolt, the cosmic lightning. Mm. Um, Jupiter also, in the Roman pantheon, he has the cosmic lightning bolt. Yeah. So yeah. there's a connection then between Marduk and Jupiter. He may have well even just represented the planet itself. Mm. So then, I'll, since Albine then was from Babylonia, because the kingdom of Ere was in Babylonia, uh, you could then sort of say that the Swinid could be a sorcerer priest of Marduk mm. see. See. or a powerful enchanter. Yeah. And yeah, so this next bit is uh, Mary Jones, and she goes on to, to say um, that basically this swineherd um, were either magicians or priests or, or the likes one offspring of a god or goddess. Mm. Huh. And I mean, magician priest is an ideal term for druid as well, isn't it? I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you, somewhere, got, somewhere in between the two, you know. And, mm. Yeah. So you basically got this character called who could be a priest or, you, or even a Chaldean because they were sort of like... Uh, uh, priests of um, what's the word? Oh, I can't think now. But uh, but they were they, they, they you, you could even say the Chaldeans were a subset of the Babylonians in in some mm. ways, and they were like yeah yeah. But anyway, what what what's important for this part is that in Babylonian astronomy, there's a constellation called the Swine. Ooh, and then. Like I said, I've been trying to tie this into the star map. So what you got what is significant? Um Manus Floyd, where Hen when laid down uh, to give birth, that spot is location is the location of the constellation of the spine. So <laughs> Hen when being a swine lays down in the constellation of the swine. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, so, so can I ask Steve? Had you had you yeah. already identified the swine constellation before you then went back and looked at the hen wen story, or um, uh, is this something that sort of emerged at the same time, or did the hen wen story lead you to to the swine constellation? Or uh, I, I had the star map, the, um, the physical location of maybe eighty of the stars. Yeah, quite a, quite a while back. So I've just been trying to find the, the connections and try and put as much evidence as I can mm. um, into this. Um, so I knew two possible locations then where the spine could be. Um, I'll go on to one, one of the other slides. I'll go into that a bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, I, if I'm jumping ahead, don't worry. No, that's okay. Tell, tell me to shut up and we'll get on with it. But... Um... <laughs> but um, one of the possibilities was the spine is the constellation of Delphinus, which is not too far away, and that would be in the sort of the Ponty Pool area, New Inn. Right. Mm. Um, but when I searched, I couldn't find anything. 
But then there's another source which said that one of the stars was in Andromeda and one was in Lacerda. So I looked in our location and then I found enough there to say, yeah, this this is going to be the constellation of the swine. Right. Okay. You you actually had the the, the physical and and place name evidence in that spot. Yeah, so I, yeah. I've got um, the one star, I definitely know where it is, because when you overlay the star map, it's, it's bang on target. <laughs> <laughs> like like most of them are. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But, um, the other one, there's a farm name which implies it's it's there, and I know where the star should be. I haven't found anything yet, but there is a field down there called Kai Main, which means field stone. So there may be a stone with a star, would be marking it right okay yes yeah wow so that that's another journey up to tombala way at some point <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you do you ever worry when you see these things fall in fields that that it could just be plowed out or cleared and yeah 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 but uh I, i've got enough most of them are marked by canes or tamulai yeah, which um, is too much for a farmer to move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, some of them are not. Uh, some of them have just got a, a, a damn big stone there. Cool, right? Yeah, because I was looking for one for one of the stars of Ursa Major, and I knew where it should be, but there was nothing on any maps. Um, I it couldn't find anything at all. But the the farm name sort of indicated it could be something there. All right. So I I went there couldn't find anything they would because it's, it's on a, a ridge there was a lot of ridge stones there so you couldn't say that that's definitely anything but then I looked over just happened to glance over the, the farmer's wall and in amongst the trees is this big lump of a stone there on his <laughs> own <laughs> right where it should be and when I say right where it should be within 30 meters where I, I predicted it'd be oh wow that's so, brilliant. That's amazing. I mean, it was a 12 mile round walk, mate, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Did you find it right at the end of your walk as yeah. well? <laughs> well, no, I knew I was going, so I, I walked there. Walked, oh, of course, yeah, back. you had your position, Mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God. Oh, wow. Oh, at least, at least you didn't come back empty handed. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, at, at one point, I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> And it's only because I looked over this wall. I, I just looked. I thought, that looks strange. So looked over the wall. And, oh, it's a, it's a damn stone. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. I mean, it's probably about four feet tall, five feet long, and about two to three foot wide-ish. Oh, wow. Mm. So, so it's, uh, a, it's a big lump of stone. Quite a it? block, yeah. Yeah. It's probably why the farmer never moved it. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so Manus Floyd, so uh, this is where the foothills of Manus Floyd is where Penn went um, lay down. But I'm going to suggest, like we did with um, the word Gan, and you've got two different meanings added together. Um, I'm, I'm also going to try and do it with this as well. So Floyd in Welsh generally means grey. Um, and day-to-day -day use, people just use it to describe grey. Mm -hmm. It can all yeah, it can also mean faint or pale, and it can also mean holy or blessed. So the grey and the faint and pale, you could say, yeah, they they they're similar. You know, you, you, you can see why they but but then you got holy blessed, which uh why yeah. would the same word mean mean that as well? Mm -hmm. So this um, quote here from Eric Arena um, in National Magic in Babylonia. It's a key concept that needs to be understood of how the Babylonians treated the stars. Mm. So basically, um, they, they prayed to the stars quite often. Um, right. And they'd use the stars, instead of us praying to a saint, asking for help, they would do the same thing to a star. Um, they would even get beer, for example, inf infuse it with herbs or whatever, put it out in front of a star, 
so it vibes the energy from the star and then you drink and then you become so they taught treated these stars as quite holy then when when you look at it yeah um so they weren't just like pinpoints of light they they were revered in a way yeah mm. do you think just like a saint you would go to a different star for a different purpose you know if you were having uh health issues you'd go to one star if it was something to do with health your home. issues is, what i can understand is health issues you would go to um basically the star vega oh right okay which, yeah, which is the, con the lyra constellation yeah um <clears throat> which is interesting because <laughs> vega is always associated with a dog or dogs um and these dogs would take part in the healing service so they would be, they would be part of the healing. Oh wow! Fantastic. So, where the constellation of Gula is, or the she goat, which is where Vega would be, on the opposite mountain, directly looking over this mountain, you have um, where the sitting dogs would be. Um, and one of the mountains directly opposite is called the Aral, which means to care for, to look after. Oh, amazing <laughs> so you go one mountain with the dogs are with the sitting dogs are overlooking the other mountain with the she goat taking part of the in the healing process yeah and you got this mountain name which means to look after to care for oh wow beautiful and yeah. it's like that it's like that everywhere that that type of yeah. one mountain it's got one thing and the other mountain is related to it yeah and it, and it paints a bigger picture the the more you know, the yeah. more ideas you've got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually read a, a really interesting um, paper recently about the use of dogs for um, uh, caring for women in childbirth, but oh, childbirth right, yeah. in in prehistoric times. Yeah, oh. and they reckon, I reckon they they've got lots of like very old, like like Mesolithic stuff. Where, yeah, where you'll have like a pregnant female seated with mm. dogs either side of her. Um, so that yeah, that's what immediately jumped to mind when I saw that. But that's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. So back to Manus Floyd. Um. So what you could say then is this word Floyd could mean holy star, with the first meaning which has got grey, but the faint pale bit, could describe the physical light. Mm. Um. Even though this, you could look out and go, oh my god, that's a bright star. Compared to the sun, yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> or or a campfire, they just yeah. pinpoints the light. They, they, they are pale, pale or faint. Um, no, I, I I've definitely heard described stars described as a similar in a similar way in modern English. So, yeah, <laughs> that's that. I don't think that's too much of a stretch at all, Steve. No, yeah. and then the second meaning gives us function as an intermediary, intermediary between a person and their the god or gods or whatever, because you could pray to the star to get to a god then. Like we pray mm -hmm. to a saint and then God would help through that saint. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea. Because um, basically what happened, when I every time I thought, right, I need to find a star in this location. So I go to the location on maps generally, and I thought, right, then I can't see anything. But this word Floyd would pop up time and time and time again. Not directly where they should be, but next to it, maybe 100 metres away or half a mile away. Mm. But it was it kept on repeating and repeating. I thought, does that mean anything? And then that's why I started going looking at these different meanings and seeing if those meanings, you could gain more on why this word Floyd was always there. Mm. And then I... It, I just I remember then that over in Saint Genis, um, where the mini star map is, mm. um, uh, Wilson of Black had discovered uh, this mini star map, um, which basically describes how to use the bigger star map, mm. and you got like a central point, and you, you go through these different canes to different constellations. Well, one of the well, a couple of the canes there are actually got the word Floyd attached to them. Right, so, okay. So on this upper St. Genis, where there's this mini star map, 
you have these names here. <laughs> so one of them is Carnes Lloyd or Floyd, which if you use the way I'm translating, it would mean Starkin, the Carnes with mm. Jin and the Lloyd Floyd or Holy Starkin. Then you have Carnesi Floydian, which is the plural, Kings of the Stars. Mm. Right. But then you also have, in that day, you have Kevin Floyd. So in general use, if somebody saw Kevin Floyd, you just go Grey Ridge mm. or Back Ridge. But Kevin itself um, can mean back, as in some kind of support, um, a ridge, and it can mean middle or centre. So if you then add the meanings of Floyd and Kevin together, you could then get the supporting ridge at the centre of the Holy Stars. <laughs> so from going from Grey Ridge, you know of this basically a sentence. And I got a map next. So if you look at the numbers, number one, you have Carnes Lloyd or Carnes Lloyd. Yeah. Mm. Number two is Carnedi Floydian. Mm. And then Kevin Floyd, which is a ridge right in the center of the star map of this mm. mini one. See, I've circled the canes. Yes, yeah, I can see them, yeah. Got it. So if you look at the canes, right in the middle, you have this central supporting ridge for the for the stars huh. brilliant that is fantastic and um i think just a note to our viewers hopefully we'll uh, have a chat with steve in future about the uh mini st Genneth map and hopefully um uh pull that apart a bit more and have a bit of a look of a deeper map yeah. um but this is great for now steve this is Oh, this is fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah so because then it, it, it makes sense. And what will what Wilson and Black ever say in that I think they had the Polaris stone or the central stone near Craigerhaven. And outside our farm there are some big stones there. Mm. Um so what the idea was that you go from there and it, it basically translated the dream of is it Ron Abbey? Yeah, dream of yeah. Ron Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with um, with a play, is another word I struggle with. Gree balls, is it? Ooh, gr yeah, something oh, yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is uh, what's a bracket as a like a uh, star knowledge, a game of mm. star knowledge. And basically, basically, you have these different characters coming in. Out, they come from different coloured tents, and um, with different symbols on them, and the different colours they they say uh, represent different directions. Mm. Um. Mm. And the images on it would represent the constellation as such. So each time one of these players come out of this, one of these knights come out of there, it basically what, it, what I think they were trying to say is that you go from the central point in the, the direction of the colour and then yeah. you get to the constellation. Yeah, so they're talking about the, the colours uh, representing certain points on the zodiac. Yeah. Um, as per heraldic colours, is that right? Is it heraldic colours represent certain uh, directions? I think. Oh, do they? I'm not sure about that. I I, I think that's where they. Yeah. I think that's where how they how they drew that together was from. Uh, yeah, heraldic colours representing um, cardinal directions. I think. Card cardinal directions. Yeah. Um. Oh wow. So so do you think uh, so so Kevin Lloyd, um. This ridge, you you don't think that's necessarily a, a viewing a viewing platform? Places, um, it does. I haven't looked at it for a while, so I wouldn't need to go back to and have another mm. look. Yeah, but yeah, so this word Floyd, um, because normally in Welsh, um, for s stars, for example, is Seren, and I think the star singular is Ser. Um, but what I'm suggesting is this word Floyd way, way, way back when could have actually represented the stars on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. But not the physical star in the sky, which right. which would be something different. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. So, so, so um, a word that, that uh, almost um, designates and represents star, but you wouldn't necessarily use it for... No. You use it for something representing a star rather than for a... Yeah. 
yeah, star-like, something star-like, possibly. Or, yeah. Well, it, yeah, they do represent. Yeah. Because in this, in this case, for example, um, of, of the star map, none of these canes are on the, the, the big star map then. No, no. Yeah. So even though they okay. got Lloyd, they just saying through this star cane is where you get to the real star. To constantly. the real star, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Right, can we um, just have a pause there? Yeah. Right. To the Hello. Oh. <laughs> 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 so now we're we going to finally get to the constellation of the swine. Um, like I was saying, that uh, Hen Wen lies down on the foothills of Manis Lloyd, um, and this would be where the constellation of the swine is. But where Manis Lloyd is, um, you've got, first of all, Gavin White um, basically stating that most commentators, commentators favour Delphinus and uh, mm. the Dolphin. Now, that would like be down the Pontypool New Inn area. Um, but then Herman Angry and David Pingree in Astral Sciences in Mesopotamia, they were... Uh, they, they put this in it, but it's basically, I don't know the guy's first name, but it's Koch 1995. Okay. Um, they've got the, the pelvis of the pig as Alpha Lacerdae and the breast of the pig as Omicron Andromedae. So when they've gone through in that book, they've got body parts are represented by certain stars. So you know, like that arm mm. is there, that part is there. So you can build up a picture. Um, so when I looked at both areas, um, Delphinus, I, I, tr I tried to translate everything I could find in that area, and there's no mention of anything um, to do with the swine. So I thought, right then, well, I'll have a look in the other area, which is Alpha Lacerda and Omicron Andromeda. Um, uh, can I just ask, sorry, Steve, sorry to yeah. interrupt. Is Alpha Lacerti and Omicron Andromedae part of a, a, a modern Greco-Roman um, constellation that we might recognise, or are they sort of individual stars? Oh, like, sorry, these are the individual stars. These are the modern... Mm, modern star yeah. names, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so the constellation is Lacerta. Is Lacerta, um, right, okay. Oh, um, I see, yes, okay. Alpha Lacerta is the, the main star. The main star of Lacerti with Omicron, but yes, okay, yeah. I got that, yeah. And then... So we got a yeah, bit then, of Lacerti and a bit of Andromeda. Um, that's that's it. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. Oh, by um, modern modern star maps, anyway. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. They, that's where they had the the swine is Alpha Lacerti and Omicron Andromeda. Mm. So I knew which stars to look for on the ground. Um, like so, when you overlay a star map, you go right. That star's there. That star's there. So I knew the two locations where I had to had to look. Mm. So this is a, a, a not a zoomed in a, a sort of bigger overview. So this new in in the top right, uh, I don't know if you can read my writing, it's called Delphinus. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The one to the left I circle is Manith Lloyd. You'll notice that it's got Manith Main on there. Um yes. in Stone Stone Mountain. Yeah. Um that mountain's got two names for some reason. One part is Manith Lloyd and the other part is Manith Main, which I'm, I'm not sure why. Mm -hmm. um, it might just be two different parts of it. Yeah. So, yeah, Alpha Lacerda um, is, is close to a farm called Pant Gwyn. Um, I haven't got a cursor on my iPad, but I don't know if you can see Kevin Rossog near the bottom circle. Oh yeah, just above Kum Khan there. Kum Khan, yeah. So it's, yeah, just above Kum Khan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's to the right of there. Okay. Um, so you you got a rough location. I got a, a zoomed in map in a moment, and then you've got um, Omicron Andromeda, which is close to the hill fort in Tumbalam. Mm. Um, that's where the breast of the pig is, um, and there you've got what's known as the Manid Henley Sparrow Cemetery, um, Covlin has got an unknown date. Uh, so they don't know. they just got an unknown date for it. But I think it was megalithic portal, is it? 
Yeah, yeah. And they, yeah, they, they put down uh, there's a Neolithic Bronze Age cane. Yeah. So, okay. so the Bronze Age in Britain lasted until about, I mean, approximately 800 BC as far as I. So mm. if you if you go back to the two migrations, one in 1700 BC and one in 500 BC, you can sort of tentatively rule out the Brutus migration mm. because the cane is older than when, mm-hmm. Absolutely. when you're right. Yeah, 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 I'm with you. Yeah. <clears throat> so we got one way of sort of, well, rule, possibly ruling out one, unless obviously the dates of the canes are on. Um, and then at some point, I'll, I'll show you an, another presentation where um, you can, I've, I've got it down to around 1400 BC where it could be the star map was built. But that's a possibility. You can't say it's definite, mm. but it is a possible way of dating, dating it by how the figures are drawn on the ground, if okay. that makes sense. Yes. Is that is that by um, linking it back to sort of dating the zodiac essentially? Um, yeah. Well, I haven't put in yet. Maybe I should have put this in here. I'll, I'll go on to something in a minute where, and I can't remember the date, so I'll, I'll just touch on it. Where certain constellations fell out of use. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. This is what I'm trying at to a get at. Point, yeah. yeah. Certain constellations fell out of use, and another constellation took over that. Mm. Um, so one of the constellations here fell out of use, which was, um, and then ended up being what's known as the panther, um, okay. or, or more accurately, the demon with a gaping mouth. <laughs> cool name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is, is an interesting interesting point with that. I, I just mentioned this quickly before we carry on. Yeah, yeah um, go for it. The panther or the demon with the, the gaping mouth. Um, depictions of this panther then has got water flown out of his mouth. Hmm. And they, they don't know why this panther would have water flown out of his mouth. Hmm. But there's one um, quote which was basically saying that the, the, pan, the water from the panther's mouth flows to the foot of the stag. Right. And nobody really knows what that means. Until you mm-hmm. draw a star map over Britain, over this area, and where the panther, the crown of the panther would be, below it is a river, and that river follows down to the valley and ends up being at the foot of the stag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's amazing. Incredible. So when, when you draw the stag, its feet are literally by the river. And the water flows down <laughs> to the foot of the stag. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and and what date did that that constellation go out of out of favour? Do you know? I, I off the top of my head, no, I don't. No, no, no. I, I, no, I knew. I thought another. I might be pushing you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be for another time. <laughs> uh, yeah, great. No, I I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So we got this a rough date, and now that is pre eight hundred BC. Um, so, oh, I, I've just put some of these dual meaning words in here, so I've just added them in again. But I've also added Gwyn, which also can mean holy, blessed. And it, and sometimes the colours that are represented are actually the colours of the star. Mm. So you could have uh, Gongor or Kongor, um representing the star. And that star, physical color is red. So, yeah. the, and then gone last, which is the blue cane. The star's color is blue. So you got, and here you got Gwyn, which can be white. And where Pan Gwyn is, oh my God, this right. I'm sure is a white color. No, I'm not. Leave that one. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I don't want to say that's a white star when it's not. I might be getting myself confused. <laughs> but I've, I've written holy white star here, but I, yeah, leave, leave that for a minute. Well, anyway, I, I get what you're getting at, though. We, we, yeah. they, they, they match what uh, the sort of light coming from those stars as we have identified them. Yeah. 
and I got a funny feeling I shouldn't have put White Star in there because I got a funny feeling there's not actually a White Star, but <laughs> I'll have to check on that one. <laughs> but um, Arva and Garva, um, mm. the G's been dropped again. Um, I'll show this on a on one of the maps in a minute. It can mean course, way, journey, but it also can mean herd or crowd. So it could mean the course of the crowd, the journey of the crowd, mm. um, the path of the crowd. Um, it could just be marking an old rover's road. I don't know, but because it's in relation to the constellation of the spine, and this is where the people came, it might be marking that as well. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've gone through some of these. Uh, right. Um, so some of the words will come into use in a moment. So we've got coid, which means wood or trees. Moch in Welsh means swine or pig. Um, and in the constellation of the swine, where this where it would be, you have coid and moch, which is the wood of the swine. Mm. So the field name is Kaidamoch. That's probably a misspelling. No, right. Okay. Have, yeah, then you have these are on the, the tithe maps. Um, so you have Coid Gwyn Petha. Now I can't find the word Petha, but there is a word Peth, which means far, far off, far away, distant, remote. Right. It could, could be indicating the people here, the course of journey of these people from far distant, far remote. Mm. Mm. And then you got Gwyn again there, but there are also other meanings to it, which can mean pain, ache, or pang, and rage and wrath. Um, so trying to get all those to fit in one sentence is uh, very difficult. Mm. Um, so there's a, a farm there called Pant Ar Ar Pant Ar 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 <laughs> <laughs> or the hollow depression of the journey of the crowd. Um, Pant Gwyn. Now I've written here the value of the white star. Maybe it is a white coloured star. Hmm. I, I, I must have put it in there for a reason. You seemed confident at some point, anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what, what is also with trying to build up a story with these different words? Um, Pantwin is also the, the swine's pelvis. So even though it is in a valley, I mean, if you look at a pelvic, just the bones of a pelvis, it also forms hollow. So it, it could describe the pelvic hollow. Ah. Mm -hmm. and Gwyn which can mean pain, ache, pang so and it can also well it could be indicating the act of giving birth uh, from yeah, the absolutely. pelvis True. to a bee in a grain yeah so when, when I add all these words together I, what I'm trying to do is trying to build up a story um like I said, I, I think it's just one giant manuscript and you've got to try and find a way of reading it then. Yeah. How, Adam, how, do you notice yeah. how similar this is to how your dad works on? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, things. I mean, this is it. I mean, I, Steve, I don't know how much... Have you seen any, any of the stuff with me, Dad? And I have, yes. I yeah. Have, yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, and... it, it blows my mind sometimes. And uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I mean, for every, anyone who hasn't, you know, you can go and uh, have a look at the, the videos I've got on the channel about the Bardic Code. But, you know, it, we're, we're talking about place names and everything like that. You know, having these hidden manuscripts in them, stones had the same thing. You, you know, yeah. these could have been, um, I guess, like just just the, someone who can read them can decode what they're trying to say. And they actually, it's like a, a it, yeah. library. You know, it's, yeah. it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, ver a very, a very small piece of, inf you know, a very short uh, net, just a name or word or phrase can then open out into giving you a whole selection yeah, I, I of ideas. Almost, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, it just comes back to the idea of a a, um, a mnemonic again, doesn't it? You know, someone could yes. be taught all these things from birth. And all they yeah. just need is that one little reminder, just to just that little twig, just to go. Yep, yeah, now I, yeah. from that word, I've now got a two-hour-long story. I can I can <laughs> tell people, or you know, yeah, yeah. 
It's amazing. It, Which anyway. is essential for an oral culture. I mean, yeah. Well, I said, yeah. You got, yeah. yeah. You know, like, so there's all these stones in, in Britain and Wales that are said to be in bad Latin. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know what their spelling was actually, what they could have been doing is, it's just a code you don't know how to read. And it looks yeah. a bit yeah. like that. Like, and it's, yeah. it's like, they knew exactly what they were doing and how yeah. to, they're yeah. not stupid people. You know, it's it's mm. incredible. I'm loving this. And when, when I, like I said, I, I'm quite willing to do four or five more of these or, in fact, I'm quite willing to keep on releasing stuff at a periodic time until I do finish this book. Um, yeah. Because some of the stuff which I, I will hold back is could be a book on itself. But the yes, Star yeah. Map stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah great. I, I think it's 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 a, a story that needs to be told. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That. Yeah, exactly. I'd be quite happy to cover it. You know? I yeah, mean, absolutely. I mean, on, as long I'm as people, a... uh, people are willing to listen and uh, they're interested, I'd, I'd be willing to do more. Fantastic. Well, I'm willing to listen, so. <laughs> and so am I. So, <laughs> if yeah, me, if me and Adam are willing to listen, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't really matter about everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's okay then. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, I, if, the way I'm, the, the length of time has taken me to write this book, it, I don't know how long it's going to take. Yeah. And I think I think some of this needs to get out there now, like, so. Yeah, yeah. So yeah I, me and Adam have this I'm, opinion on quite a few different things, don't we, Adam? But yeah, yeah. Some of it just needs to be out so people can work on it and look at it. And yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying everything I'm putting forward is correct. I'm, I'm expecting people to come along, pick it apart, and say, "Well, oh, I understand that bit, that bit." Mm. Mm. But it's, it's given, uh, hopefully, it's given people enough ideas, or even just by using the words all the different meanings, I'm joining them together and trying to form a sentence. Mm. Yeah. Right, sorry, can we pause again? I'm going to have to yeah. do my usual skip. Okay, this is a, a more detailed map. So if you can see at the bottom, you've got Omicron Andromeda where the pig's head is. Mm. Um, that's where those set of four canes are. And then up the top, you've got Pant Gwyn. The, lo the location of the star would, would be to the left of that, but that's the, the farm name. Okay, yeah. And then where you've got, I've written Wood of the Swine. So right in the middle of this constellation, you've got Koidemach, the Wood of the Swine. So you've got the Swine, the Wood of the Swine, mm. right in between the two. Yeah, which which to me is uh, and I know more, a lot of the constellations like that. You got the constellation, and then you got a name there, which will tell you what the constellation is. So ah, right, okay, I see what you mean. So like a, almost like a, a general name for the area that gives you the constellation, and then more specific points for the stars. Yeah, yes, yeah, so you got yeah. Koida Mark. So it's the wood of the spine, the spine constellation, yeah. the yeah. spines yeah. there. I mean, the, the stars match where they should be. Hmm. Which it makes an interesting discussion then of what is that hill fort at Tumbalam. Yeah. Hmm. Who built it and and when was it built? Was it built at the same time as this star map? Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's amazing. Like, they... uh, how, how much information did they know from the previous? Generations or yeah, or, yeah. Whether yeah. there is a relationship between them, I I don't know, but yeah. Because Tumbalam is is one of these um, hill forts that is generally considered older than Iron Age, isn't it? I thought any, well, I, I, I could be yeah. wrong, but I I know that quite a lot of hill forts actually have a Bronze Age, if not yeah, if not a Neolithic foundation, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I, I'll I'll have a. I've definitely looked at something at the archaeology of Tumbalam fairly recently, but it's not obviously not stuck in my head very well. But um, I, I definitely have been left with the idea that it's um, it's uh, certainly the mound is definitely older than Iron Age. Yeah. Or the right. mound on the end. Yeah, the mound on the end. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because on the on, on the modern surveys, it's marked as a mot. <laughs> 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 yeah. no. No. 
Yeah, yeah. I had a look at them and think, yeah, whatever. Yeah, m- mots are in uh, in population centres if they're mm. anywhere. You wouldn't stick yeah. it on the top of a hill. No. And then uh, with, with our spine, as I've just been to on this, he's got money slide. It is that be north of where this constellation is, and mm. Mm. so yeah. So in relationship to that is. Uh, so it's in the in the right location. It's got the name there. Um, the one set of canes is a bang on for Omicron Andromedae, mm. and it's just finding the other one then. And the story seems to fit, coming all the way through and landing in this spot. Amazing. So we are literally, you know, just by the by the foothills of Munith Lloyd. Yeah. Just where she's the hen when it's meant to lie. Yeah, and we have references possibly to 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 childbirth around the pelvis yeah. area as well, specifically yeah. that. Yeah, that's brilliant. It's amazing. Um, uh, did, it, it does say that she lies down at the foothills of Manus Lloyd at Mice Gwyneth. Now there is a Mice Gwyneth mm. in the lowlands to the to the east, but there's nothing there to. I mean, Mice Gwyneth could have just meant all of that land. Yeah. Maybe a general term. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it's only the one because it is outside of the star map anyway. So it's not part of it. Mm. Considering you've still got, you know, Gwyn in the uh in the area, you know, the, the, mm. the, 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 the suggestive, isn't it? That the Yeah. It's a wider name. So Koidemoch. The word moch. So can you, when you go, I think you're breaking there a bit, Steve. Yeah, we're losing you, Steve. Yeah, hello. Still go. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Yeah, we lost you for a bit. bit. Yeah. All right. Oh, where was I? Uh, you just said Koidimoch. Co- co- oh, Koidimoch. Right, so Koidimoch, so the word moch means swine. There's an association between the swine and Jupiter. Mm. So can you use that word then, moch, to find places on the star map which represent the planet Jupiter? Ah, I did, I did wonder how Jupiter would come back into it, because we... Uh... Ah, interesting. There's it's, it's not, it's, it's nothing on this slideshow. No, the, no. The, um, there is there is one of the stars of Cassiopeia. Um, I use a modern term. Mm. Um, um, where that star is, there's an association with that star and Jupiter. Ah. And the and the name of the wood there is. Go on. Mach. Coy de Mach. <laughs> ah, brilliant. Yeah, just, everything think, just everything just keeps coming back round, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the, that's not the only way you can find Jupiter. Um, I mean, you, you can also use the word Bran, as in mm-hmm. Raven, because yeah. an association between the Raven and Jupiter as well. Okay, yeah. and really, and and not far from here, you have a little valley called Combran. Mm-hmm. The Valley of Jupiter, you could say, going into the to the main town of Cumbran. But that an explanation needs another time. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it would be for hours. So, do you think there are other um, stories, myths, legends in Wales that can lead to certain constellations? Is this something else in? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the Mabinogi has a way the Bulls and the Black it translated it and put the ideas through in uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Mm. Um, there are two of them at, and two, yes, two of them at, uh, that, I, that I've been able to work out on the ground as well. Now, they did the dream of Ron, Ron Abwe, and then there's two, but one is um, Paul, Lord of David. Mm. Or Prince of David, mm. and 
Oh, was he ever called Brownwen? Oh, um, oh, I know this. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Basically, that's the one about the flood. The yes, yeah, Brownwen and the flood. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, and and you can work out from that possibly even the height of the flood. <laughs> no way. Wow. Possibly, because you've got all these different place names, and if the water came to us, for, for these place names to be what they're called, the water needed to have come to a certain level, mm. which is about 40 metres, I think, Oof. above sea level. That's high. Yeah, but it might not have been a flood as in a flood. It might have been a, like a tidal wave. Yeah, tsunami sort of tsunami, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't mean it necessarily came up to that level and stayed and at that stayed level. But no. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's not much left to go now. Um, so this is um, a Sumerian Babylonian tale, the Epic of Anzu. So the Anzu figure is a lion-headed eagle. Um, and this is a very, very brief summary because there's only two lines. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, the Anzu, Anzu steals a tablet of destinies from Enlil. And then Enlil gets Ninurta, sometimes it's Marduk, um, to go and get retrieve him. And then Ninurta, in this version, defeats Anzu and, and gets the tablets of destiny back. So this quote now from Stephanie Daly is uh, in the Mesopotamia is, listen to the praise of the powerful one's strength, who subdued, who bound the mountain of stones in his fury, who conquered sore in Anzu with his weapon. Now, Gavin White believes that the Anzu is represented in the night sky as a constellation of Cygnus. Right. So on the right, then, you've got a, a partial map of the night sky. And if you look, you've got Andromeda, then Lacerda, and then Cygnus. Mm. So if we go back to the other map in a minute, but you've got a, one's above the other, so it should be boom, boom, boom. And then when you... So Deneb, or Alpha Cygni, is located on, on Maniv Main, where it's a circled, the middle one. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, it basically stands over three mountains. And the relationship then, you've got Andromeda, Lacerta, and Cygnus, one on top of the other. Mm. And the Anzu bird conquers, sorry, Ninurta conquers Anzu and binds Stone Mountain or the Mountain of Stones. And where that main star is, is Manith Main, which is Stone Mountain. Mm. Mountain far. <laughs> Before, I, I, I am put this in here, but before that, the, the story mentions how, <coughs> excuse me, how the, uh, two seconds. <coughs> how they uh, build cattle pens then, and sheep pens. Um, and just where the M is on Manith Main, on the side of the hill, you've got a place called Beath Main. And mm. art means cattle pen, sheep pen, sheep fold. <laughs> so it, two references from that story are on that mountain where Cygnus would be and is in the right relationship to the other constellation and the constellation of the swine. Wow. Brilliant. That's fantastic. That must be really satisfying for you when you when you find these things. But just to... <clears throat> Just as a uh, a way of checking yourself, basically. Yeah. You yeah. know, if you find something, you're like, oh wow, okay, right. Well, when I first started finding these things, I I, I honestly thought somebody was playing a practical joke on me. <laughs> really? I, 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 I said, surely this can't be right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah. Alan Wilson teasing you from uh, mm. <laughs> from the other land. <laughs> well, some of these books, I thought, oh, he, has, he hasn't written these other books and used a different name, as he? And then, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I, you know, that actually reminds me of how um, uh, when uh, Alan Wilson would deal with the subject of people saying that British history is a forgery and he's saying, what are you talking about? 
thousands of monks over a thousand years all working together with yeah. <laughs> with with church you know church dedications genealogies place names yeah. and they and they've all been working together for this grand forgery no i, I don't. don't think so no yeah. you've no. got so many things here that that confirm and and at least work with the other ideas i think that's absolutely fantastic yeah um this is only scratching the surface at the moment mm. Mm. i think it's a great introduction to the into the subject yeah because when you think it was it 40 constellations this uh, roughly and this is just one i'm touching on the second one mm. and then you got all the, the stories on top of it to add, yeah, to add to the constellations because you need to know the constellations before you can work up the stories mm. wow but yeah if if, if uh, people are interested in me doing another one um, I was going to do what, what I call Enki and the search for Eridu where you could possibly find the representation of Eridu on the ground What's representing Eridu on the ground then? Could you just uh, give a quick overview of Eridu for our listeners? It's, it's basically the Enki built um, the first city at a place called Eridu, which is the name of the city. Hmm. Um, he built it um, on the edge of the um, Iraqi swamp marshes. Obviously, the marshes have moved over time, but the place of Mod Eridu, uh, when you go to Iraq, it's, it's further away from the, the swamps because the swamps have, have moved. Okay, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's was, it was built on the edge of a, a swamp and it was the first city and it was Enki's city. Yeah. And so you think there is a, a place in, in Wales that represents Eridu as well? Yeah, and Nippur and Arak and Sipa. Um, wow. Yeah, they, they, they're, not, like, they're not the real, and Babylon itself. Yeah, but they're not the real cities. No, no, no. they 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 don't right. mess with them. These these are represented. You could say this is a mountain then with a name that represent that city because certain cities are have association with certain constellations. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, uh, I've come across that before in in Wilson and Blackett and elsewhere as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's all these different cities then that you can find on the. What a brilliant way to to bring a landscape under your uh, control, or mm. and yeah. I don't mean I don't mean you know in terms of controlling people or anything like that, but but to 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 basically map it through something that you are so already familiar with, either yeah. the Zodiac, which you can look <clears throat> up to at any point and see, but also where you're from, you know, where, where, yeah. and, and then, as uh, I uh, say, lay that over the this new landscape that you've come to. Hmm. Yeah. In, and then immediately you, you've, you've got it, basically. It's yours. There's no, there's no yeah. hidden secrets. You can, you can map, you can organise, hmm. you can... Well, it's, it's, got, it's got something to help, but it's got to the point where if I'm going somewhere, all oh, right, I'm going to Leo. <laughs> I, I, not, yeah. that I, not that I'm going somewhere else. I'm going. I'm going to there. So when I'm driving around the the valleys, I I I don't go by the place names half the time now. I go by the constellation names. Yeah, really. <laughs> and I mean, I I, I remember cool. you having this conversation with Ross because uh, uh, is it? I think Angie suggested it. Uh, that was uh, it. Yeah, as, as, a, as a map, and and I as a map, and yeah. Ross said, you know, Ross said, oh look, I'm. I'm uh, you know, ask a local, and the local says, "Oh, I, uh, this is this is Orion's Belt farm." And you think, "Oh, well, I'm at Orion's Belt. I need to get to this place, and that yeah. that way." So yeah. I'm going to go ahead this way. You know, that's yeah, yeah, yeah brilliant, <laughs> absolutely amazing. So cool. So cool. I think um, the the history is really interesting as well, with, um, because this this period that that Wilson and Blackett reckon Albine came and seems to fit in. <laughs> seems to be within the first couple of hundred years of Babylonian civilization, mm. from what I've looked on Wikipedia. So our timing looks about right for a Babylonian yeah. star map as well. 
is that this is called the Middle Middle Bronze Age by British archaeology. I need to have a look into why they have split the Bronze Age into oh, right. early Bronze Age, Middle yeah, Bronze yeah. Age, and Late Bronze yeah. Age because it's normally to do with some sort of change in the in the archaeological goods. Ah. Rep representing some something happened in Britain at that time, which is why they, they haven't just split it arbitrarily. You know, they they mm. split it for a reason. So it'd be really interesting to see what the middle mil, middle bronze age yeah, means yeah. to British archaeology. Yeah. Um and I mean all I can say is locally the, that's when there was a huge explosion of 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 um settled living on, on Dartmoor. It's when oh, all right. the roundhouses were bit yeah, well yeah. When they at the moment, because just like in Wales, there's there's limited archaeology and limited that's dating it, yeah. on a lot of sites, but it's generally that's around. when when it's seen as an an explosion of 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 activity on Dartmoor in that Middle mm. Bronze Age period, um, and there's no doubt that Babylonians would have been after tin, so yeah, very yeah. much. So so uh, yeah, yeah, I think that, I think this is a fascinating period, and I think you're. Uh, at least the rough chunk of when you're when you reckon this was put together <clears throat> flies well with yeah, me yeah, so yeah. far, definitely. Yeah, you can, I can't be certain, like, but no, 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 no. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, hopefully it's an introduction which people can sort of it, it, asks, it asks more questions and gives answers. Mm. It's one way, but it, it, what I'm in, in the next one or the next one, whatever. What I'm hoping to do is get people to look at it in a different way. Um, to to start to read it, then if that makes. Yes. Yeah. I'm with you. Mm. Isn't it like yeah? Because you do have to um, develop a, a part like a, a brain to to digest this stuff, don't you? And yeah, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get round to that, but then it does eventually come through and that's true with the, like the hieroglyphs or decoding things through language all of it it seems yeah mm. yeah yeah and until you until you sort of until it well sinks in and it's probably a, a bad yeah. written and you go ah right and then you see these names over and over again and you see that place name matches that part and and yeah cool yeah brilliant but yeah with like I said, if, if people are interested, I'll do Enki in the search for Eridu do next. That um, sounds fantastic. That sounds that sounds fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and then it, it, that will touch upon how they use the landscape, the shape of the landscape, um, how they fit into certain images. Then let's say that way, because you can put images of like certain gods and that over the landscape, and the names match around that image <laughs> yeah see this is definitely an advantage that you seem to have in wales um and that hugh evans as well points towards as having these place names and having the web yeah. language in order to be able yeah. to understand them i mean um, I, I i think it'd be not impossible but very difficult not to do it yeah mm, mm, mm. well with uh, with what we've been looking at martin's work he's he's sort of we're grasping at various more recent tales and names mm. that, that do seem to link these things together. But they yeah. and they do help a lot, but it doesn't give you the same sort of uh it doesn't flesh out the story as much and it mm. doesn't give you the same amount of detail as yeah. that you get with the Welsh language. Um it, it it's often just a little signpost that sort of says, look around, look over here, there might be something interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it it definitely doesn't flesh it out like the like the Welsh language does. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, absolutely fantastic, and I, I like also the idea that um, Martin's looking at something which very much we can put in the Neolithic, and the same goes for for Hughes. If not, I mean, if Hugh Hugh Evans is isn't even older than Neolithic, I mean, mm. God knows what he's dealing with, but. The idea of information going from Britain to Sumeria and then back again, you know, almost as if there were people building star maps here, yeah. went to the Middle East and then came back and continued to build star maps here. <laughs> mm. You know, it's, uh, you know, as part of some sort of tradition or. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
or just way about a way of going about things you know it's just mm-hmm. something they just did in 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 certain places i, I just yeah and then you got the the epic of gilgamesh um uh, if i can remember this now basically gilgamesh writes down all his adventures on a monument of stone so there's an argument that this is actually a monument mm. Yeah. Recording, recording certain things that occurred in the past. <laughs> mm, written yeah, stone yeah. doesn't necessarily have to mean written on the stone, does yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like I said, I, I I'd have to go back and, but I'm I'm sure it was Gilgamesh. No, oh, I can't think. But one of the characters, anyway, went around the world rebuilding the temples. Hmm. So if they went around the world rebuilding the temples, they, they rebuilt them for a reason. After what, I don't know. Mm. And and is what because uh, it, it's definitely you can read what's around you. Yeah. Um. And it wouldn't surprise me that there was some kind of event. I I don't know. Um, and that event has been immortalized in the landscape. Mm. As a as a monument, not to not to warn people, but as a monument. I mean, we still have cemeteries and monuments to yep. fallen heroes yeah. or fallen people in the past. Then attacks, it's, yeah. it, it's something that people do. We, we build mm. these monuments. So have we built the monument to record the loss of or the death of God knows how many people? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, fascinating. Brilliant. This is awesome. Ho- hopefully, yeah. as I go along, I'll, I'll, I won't be able to give you the answers, but I might be able to suggest things then and say, well, this is the possibility. Mm. Absolutely. I think that's the fairest way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, cheers, Steve. No worries. Thank you very that's much. Brilliant. Yeah. I think that was the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the last brilliant. one. We'll, we'll we'll record a little um intro in a mo. Yeah.